Hi there, welcome to this video. My name is Robert Stacey. I'm a BIM Applications Engineer for Mana Machine. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Mana Machine Building Suite, which is a Mana Machine device product which we've created to add um, extra functionality to the Autodesk Revit software. Now, in this video, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the Libraries and Projects tool which is just one aspect of the building suite but a very important and useful one. So getting started I'm going to open up the libraries and projects tool up here in the top left and what it is is essentially a database of Revit information inside of the Revit software itself. So we can bring in uh, families, projects and images to be contained inside of this one single database which means we no longer have to look externally uh, for our Revit information which may be saved on, uh, saved on our file server, it may be saved on our C drive, it may even be saved on our desktop. More than likely it's going to be saved in more than one location. Well, how does this work? Well, across in the database tab here, what we can do is we can point the Libs and Projects tool to uh, a number of different file locations where our Revit information might be saved and it's going to import that information across into our libraries and projects database. What's great about this is these links are essentially live links so if any information was to be added to any of those file locations they'll automatically be imported across into our database meaning there's never going to be a scenario where the information inside of those file locations is going to be any different to the information inside of our libraries and projects database. Now once we've imported our information across into this database you can see I've currently got 3610 elements. There's no folders that I have to double click into. I can search this information using a number of intelligent filters. For example, up at the top here I can do a search for save window and we can see it finds all of the results which have window uh, anywhere in the attributes of which there are 182. Okay, I can get more specific with my filter. I can type in, say, plane to find all of the plane windows, of which there are six. And I can get even more specific and type in comp for a composite window, and that's narrowed it down to the single result. Now, we've got the option to edit these attributes here in grey. You can see I've already put my name next to this author here. Uh, let's change that to something else. Let's maybe put Steve in there. Put enter. What I can do now is I can uh, delete this uh, current filter out of there. Just type Steve and you can see it easily finds that uh, same object again. So we can edit these attributes to make these objects more easily findable in the future. Now across in this type parameter tab, we've got a list of all of the different types, all of the different family types, all of the different sizes of this particular window family. Now what's great about this is I can select one or several of these different types and I can load them into the current projects directly inside of this window that we're in. Furthermore we can actually select an individual uh, one of these types and we can place an individual instance directly inside of our view that we're currently in. Just like so. What's more is we can actually create new family types inside of here as well. So let's go ahead and create a new family type down at the bottom Let's t create a new size. Let's go for a, a 2000 by 910. Okay. Let's change these attributes to match. So let's change the width parameter here to 2000 and the height to 910. And let's change these other parameters here to match as well. And let's save this family type. So I've created a new family type really quick. And what I can do now is I can now place that new type directly inside of my uh, view as well. So not only is the Libraries and Projects tool an excellent database, but I can use it to load in families and load in Revit information. I can create new family types within here as well, and I can place those types directly into my design model. So that pretty much concludes the, de the demonstration. I hope it's been useful. Please leave any questions and comments in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.